This video is brought to you by the Artisan Classic Slim, the handmade yet affordable fountain pen. Click the link in the description to get 10% off your order. Okay guys, I want to talk this week about a pen which I think is grossly underrated in the fountain pen community. And I think the reason why this pen in particular is really underrated is for two reasons. First of all, it's relatively new. It was only released in the latter half of 2017. And the second reason it's really underrated is because it's overshadowed by its bigger brother, which is the Pilot Metropolitan, which you see in pretty much every single top beginner fountain pens video. But I think this pen, the Pilot Kakuno, is probably one of the best fountain pens that I've used in the past year. In fact, it even made it onto my top fountain pens of 2019. So I want to take a couple minutes to talk about it because I think this is a great pen which deserves a lot more attention. Now the Pilot Kakuno which I said which was released in the latter half of 2017 was pretty much a replacement to the other Pilot budget pen which was this. This is the Pilot 78G and in fact this was the second fountain pen which I ever uh, used. It was the first one that I ever bought and I pretty much bought it right as they phased it out because this pen from memory was only about $13. It was the cheapest um, fountain pen Parker offered which came with the Parker mainstream line of nibs. If you discount the other Pilot pens which are around this price which include the Pilot um, penmanship Though you can't really include the Pilot penmanship because it uses a more calligraphy style nib and to be honest at over what 15 or 16 centimeters long you can't really use this as an everyday carry pen. So I really count this as the cheapest and the Pilot 78G as the cheapest fountain pens Pilot offer which come with the Pilot mainstream nib and I've said from day one these are probably the best um, budget friendly nibs. They are simply the best. They're buttery smooth, um, their quality control is just some of the best and I really do love the Pilot mainstream nibs. And that's the same nib you're going to find on the Pilot Metropolitan, the Pilot Kakuno, 78G, um, Prera. So from pens ranging from 13 US dollars all the way up to 50 US dollars, you're pretty much paying for the same nib with a different body, which is why I think this pen is so much better than the Pilot Metropolitan. Now, in terms of pricing, obviously the Metropolitan is uh, about 20 US dollars and this is about 13 US dollars on Goulet pens. So it's almost half the price. So I think this is a pretty much no brainer. Um, in terms of ergonomics, I think this pen compared to the Metropolitan is so much better. I've never actually bought a Metropolitan. I've used it um, in store and, and my friends have them. So I've used them and I've always been put off by the large step down on the Metropolitan, which is why I think this pen is so much better. This pen, yes, does have an ergonomic grip. Um, it's sort of faceted on three sides, which I've always hated, especially my review of the Lamy Safari and pens that have grips like the Lamy Safari. I've never loved them, but this one here, the ergonomic grip is very subtle and I think it's very, very comfortable to hold. So let's quickly talk about the specs of this pen. So capped, it's 13 centimeters long, uncapped, it's 12 and a half centimeters long and posted, and it posts really well, it's 16 centimeters long. And in terms of the weight, capped, it's 11 grams and uncapped, it is seven grams. So I think the weighting of this pen is all right because it's sitting on that fine line between it being too light and a pen that is weighty. Because when you hold this pen, you can certainly feel that you're holding something and something very nice but it's not over the limit where it's you know dragging down on you or totally under the line where the 78G was where you're feeling like man I'm holding something you know and it's feeling odd because it weighs so little. So the ergonomics of this pen I think are just very nice. It's super comfortable to hold. I can write with this pen for a long time you know um I've written a lot with this pen. It's just super, super comfortable. And I don't have to post it, but when you do post it, you know, 
it's very nice to hold indeed. In terms of build quality, it is a huge step up from what the Pilot 78G was. Because when you looked at the Pilot 78G, yes, it's made in Japan, yes, it is Pilot, but when you pick it up, you feel like, eh, there's just something about it. Maybe it's just the thin plastic that they used, but the 78G, when you picked it up, you felt like it really was a budget pen. But when you pick this pen up, you feel like this has been properly made. It's heavier, uh, the materials feel so much nicer. Uh, it's just a much better built pen. And for around about the same price, it is really good. Now, Pilot themselves, and everyone says it uses resin. Now, after a little bit of digging, I I think I figured out that the grip section, which is clear, uses uh, acrylic, which would make sense because a lot of the other pens are made from acrylic. So I'm guessing that the whole pen is acrylic. Absolutely, the section is acrylic, but um, the body, super durable. It's really good. I'm sure it's made from acrylic. If not, it's probably some polystyrene or something, but it is really durable. Now, in terms of aesthetics, the aesthetics is saying that it's not really gonna win anyone over. It has to be said, the aesthetics is not brilliant. This one here, this is the one that they had in the store, which is um, a sort of light pale um, color and light pale blue. I'm not really sold on it, the cream and the blue, but um, there are a lot of colors out there with the Pilot Kakuno. Uh, the most popular option, and it's pretty much sold out everywhere in Australia where I try to go buy it. Um, the clear one, super popular, and I would have loved to have gotten this, but at the end of the day, it's a budget pen. I'm not too concerned about the ergonomics, I mean the aesthetics. Yeah, it would have been nice to get a clear one, but I have so many demonstrated pens. Maybe a bit of a break is nice. Um, one last thing I will say about this is that I talked earlier about this being the best budget um, pilot. A few people might point out that yes, there are other, bu other budget pilot pens. And the two that spring to mind is the Pilot V pen and the Pilot Petite One. Uh, I think both of these cost $5 or less. And the thing is, while they are pilot quality pens, unfortunately they do use different nibs. They're very basic, just very basic punched out nibs. And while they are nice to write with, they're beautifully ground, uh, they just don't provide the same enjoyment of writing. They're very basic, there's no line variation on these nibs. And while you could write with these pens for hours, um, it's just very boring, you know, at that point, just go get a rollerball or a better fountain pen. So these two pens also, they aren't built that nicely. They feel very cheap. So I always think um, the Bio Kakuno is the best budget friendly um, park, uh, pilot pen that they make. Now with that over, let's talk about the nib. This is where I'm just gonna go full on praising this pen. But first of all, let's talk about the style of the nib because this thing when it launched was probably one of my favorite things to look at because they have actually engraved a little smiley face on the nib. Uh, this one here has a winking smiley face and I think that is just adorable. Honestly, that is one of my favorite things about this. Um, Minus the nib being good. If this nib was terrible and it just had the smiley face, I'd probably still love it. I'd probably put up with it being a bad grind. But um, this is a brilliant nib. What can I say? I've used so many of the Pilot mainstream nibs over the years and every single one of them has been pretty much brilliant. The Pilot mainstream nib is just, it's just so good. First of all, grinding. The quality control, because it is made in Japan, is just some of the best, I think. Their medium nib, which I love, I had it on this, I had it on the Prera. It's just butter smooth. It glides across the page. You can write with this thing for hours. Um, in terms of flexibility, the good thing is with this nib, it's not hard as nails. You can get so much flex from this nib, well, not so much flex, but you can get a nice amount of flex in this nib which is so much comfortable to write with. You know, you can just glide it across the paper, the nib flexes a little bit and deposits ink and it's just so comfortable. There's no pressure needed. Now, of course, 
one thing is you're not going to get that much line variation with this nib. As someone who likes line variation and contrast, you're not going to get much of it. Though for everyday writing, I've always said it's not super necessary to have contrast. Um, and this nib, yes, you can get a little bit of line variation. It's mostly from a bit more ink being deposited if you press down a little bit hard. But end of the day, I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, in terms of the feed, the feed on this pen is just brilliant. Uh, these feeds are some of the best. They're so reliable. They don't hard start. You can leave these pens for a long time and you know you're going to come back and it's just going to write. I don't know, can I praise this nib anymore? I don't think I can. Uh, one thing that I will say is that this pen, when you do buy it, or at least in my case, it didn't come with a converter, and Pilot do use their own converter. This is just a squeeze converter um, that I've gotten from my Pilot 78G. They don't cost that much, but it is a cost that should be factored in. And the last thing that I will say is, can you eye drop this pen? No, you can't, unless you put a little bit of epoxy in the back, because there's a little bit of a hole. There are two holes in the back of the barrel. I'm pretty sure that's just to, you know, prevent it being a choke hazard, which I think is nice, but uh, your boy likes to eye drop his pens. So that is one thing that should be noted. And with that, let's jump into a writing sample. Hey everyone, welcome to the writing sample for the Pilot Kakuno. The nib that it uses is the Pilot Medium nib. And the ink that it's using is Mont Blanc um, Permanent Black, so Mont Blanc. This is their ISO certified black, not their cheaper, um, you know, more mainstream <laughs> black that you can find at most places. This stuff you actually have to go to Mont Blanc for, and it's a little bit more expensive, but it's so worth it. So let's get into a quick writing example. Oh, and the paper is made by Milligram. So. And as you can see from that writing sample, this nib makes you know easy work of that writing as it should. It just glides over the paper. That's why I think this is such a great pen for taking quick notes. It has no drama. It's almost 100% butter smooth. Um, it just makes writing so enjoyable and so easy. No issues whatsoever, no skipping, no hard starting. It's just, ah, it's so brilliant. Uh, one thing you will notice is there is pretty much no line variation at all. Like, there just isn't any. The ink flow is constant, and yes, even though that the nib does flex a little bit, there just isn't much line variation. Yes, if you do slow down... Yeah, you can get a little bit of contrast and you can get a little bit more ink out, but uh, the contrast is really due to more ink coming out. But uh, you can get some nice writing, but this nib just isn't really designed for that type of writing. Uh, but that's not default the nib. This nib is just brilliant for writing. Uh, in terms of ink delivery, uh, the Pilot Feeds, they're good, but they're not super wet. Um, you know, they're just all right. Uh, they're just reliable, not gushes. In terms of line width, that's the width with no uh, pressure. And let's slowly increase the pressure. So that's pretty much nothing, and that's it with the full. So yes, there is a little bit of contrast, but realistically, you're not gonna wanna uh, push that hard in everyday writing, and you really don't have to. Uh, in terms of natural line variation, in terms of the grinding, the side strokes are a tiny little bit um, thinner than the down strokes, but in normal writing, you're not really going to notice that all that much. You really don't notice it. Uh, in terms of reverse writing, 
Yeah, reverse writing sort of can be done. Um, you know, it's, it's not really an I wouldn't reverse write. I rarely reverse write with pens. So uh, honestly, not much to be had there. So summing up this nib, brilliant nib, butter smooth, but you know, are you gonna make, get any fancy line variation? No. Great nib for notes, anything else, you know, find something else. Has a smiley face on it though. And with that, that's my review of the Pilot Kakuno. Gotta say, it is such an underrated pen. As someone who is not totally on board with the Pilot Metropolitan due to its large step down, I think this pen is just a great alternative. It's almost half the price of a uh, great build quality and it uses the exact same nib. So what can I say? I really do think that this pen is a great, um, at least a great thing to look at when considering buying a first fountain pen. The only thing that I will say is a little bit annoying is there is no clip on this pen, obviously, but um, as someone who pretty much uh, puts their pen in their pocket to prevent their pen um, dropping because as someone who's used a lot of fountain pens over the years, I know the feeling when your fountain pen drops on the floor and breaks, so I'm super paranoid about that nowadays, so I just put my pen in my pocket most of the time, so there being no clip is not saying that, that worries me. So what can I say? This pen, brilliant. And with that, thank you very much for watching.